they're thrusting this upon us. Uh, we don't have a choice. It's coming. So let's start to get familiar with it now. Start to understand how to use it now. Okay, so this is part two of our episode talking about Bing Chat Enterprise. Right now, we're going to talk a little bit about Compose and Insights. Obviously, this is new, so uh, this is our, our first take on it. Yeah, so essentially, uh, just like we've learned uh, with with Chat GPT um, or GPT-4, uh, GPT-3.5 before that, major time savers. Uh, these are things that a human can do. And, and they can do them just as well, but it it takes them a lot more time. So even if you were to write your own SOP um, in the same way uh, and you were good at it, you were quick at it, it's going to take you much longer. So so we're talking about major time savers. And then uh, the big factors that you mentioned are uh, our security, right? Uh, a lot of enterprises, a lot of businesses were concerned with with security, because if you're typing in personal information uh, or excuse me, or proprietary information about your business, and then you're you're asking for results based on that, then you don't want the language learning model to uh, to be learning based off of the information that you put into it. Uh, so amazing, super helpful. This is just skimming the surface, really, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I know we have several other videos coming up on on other things that we can we can jump into uh, that we will jump into as well, even specifically from from Microsoft. But one of the things that I wanted to mention and uh, about uh, Bing Chat Enterprise that I thought was really cool, that's a little different than uh, ChatGPT, was that some of the results have links mm -hmm. that you can or there and there's uh, websites that are referenced at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, that you can go and do some additional research or you can see where some of the information was was referenced. Um, whereas in chat GPT, you just get the information and, and you kind of go from there. But I thought that was a really, a really neat little little add on there that allows you to <laughs> to kind of check yes. your work, I guess. There's that. There's also this insights page uh, feature built into here if you haven't played around with it. <clears throat> Excuse me, which kind of gives you like um, insights onto the page that you're actually on currently, uh, can tell you about it. So we could pick a, I, I didn't pick one here in advance. We need to come up with a website real quick. We could check out, uh, maybe we could go to, uh, what's something popular, the NBA.com. And you can see that here in just a second insights is going to go ahead and update. And it's going to say, wow, this is, there we go. I hope it's going to do it. Uh, related videos. It's going to give you some key points about um, this website. What does it actually say? Eastern Conference rankings. The document provides a ranking of 15 teams of the Eastern Conference. All right, here's some, some videos. Here's some more for you. Here's some related searches. You can rate the site that you're on. Um, information about the site in terms of traffic, most visits. Now, this is not necessarily the most useful information for everyday browsing, but it's cool that it's using AI to try to bring together what it thinks might be stuff that you would also be interested in, a, in looking at or knowing about the site that you're on and that it just puts it there for you in real time. Yeah, another thing I like about that is that if you are, if you're browsing in, an informational site um, like for example, if you're doing research on, uh, being enterprise or, <laughs> or being chat enterprise, or you're doing research on uh, chat GPT and you pull up a website that has a whole bunch of information that you can scroll through. Uh, it also has a summary of that information. It can, it has like your takeaway points. Um, so maybe you don't have to s spend the whole, <laughs> spend a whole hour scrolling through that, that site. Um, you have, boom, here's my key takeaways, um, kind of like a cliff notes of, of that, of that URL or that web page as well. So there's this other cool feature called insights. Okay. Right here at the top, right, which gives you corresponding information to whatever website you're on. So for instance, let's say if you're on Wikipedia and you type in tiger, you're going to see a lot of 
complementary information that is brought up through artificial intelligence topics on this page, right? So it can maybe help you figure out uh, where you want to like information you want from this page, you know, key phrases that are similar to this. If you want to do other searches, key points, it's interesting. It's got a poll related videos and then more, right? Here's some things that maybe you're interested in, like the tigers at the San Diego zoo and, and an article on that. So um, it's just fascinating that they're using AI now in real time to sort of analyze the websites you're going to and suggest complementary information that you might find beneficial. Um, so I wanted to point that out. The other thing I'd like to point out is there is this compose feature, which both you and I haven't found to be <laughs> as great as we'd like yet. Well, with a, a little bit of digging, it seems like the compose feature is something that is more useful um, when you're using some of the the, the specific uh, Microsoft applications. Like if you were in Word um, and you were looking at a document and you wanted to use a compose feature to start a draft, and then you could, uh, you know, drop that into your Word document and edit it from there. Um, but as far as using the compose feature in the, in the same way that you would use um, the chat feature, it, it doesn't really give you back as, as a, uh, doesn't give back information that's quite as useful, at least in my, in my experience. And then the other problem is that you can't, you can't continue the cycle of prompting it. Once you put a prompt in, it gives you uh, a draft and that's what you got. You can't add modifiers to the prompt. Uh, once you prompt it, it gives you a draft, gives you a response and that's what you got. So you really don't use it in the same way. Maybe in the future, we'll find out some other uses for it. I don't, I don't know what you've, how you feel about it, Travis, but <laughs> um, it's, it's okay. Uh, I do like that. You can set tone here, professional, casual, enthusiastic. You can add other tones. Um, I do like that. It's got, I, I like the idea of it, right? Do you want it short, long? Um, so for instance, if you wanted this to be an email and you wanted it to be a professional email and you wanted to tell what you wanted to write about, you could maybe take an existing email that you wanted to respond to. Somebody wrote you something and say, Hey, I want a professional response to this here's what the email said. Like, I, I want a response and I want to say kind of the following. Here's what the email said. Write me a response. And you dump it all in here and you hit generate draft. And it's going to give you something back that's probably, again, a good starting point. Now, do you need to use the compose feature to do that? Or can you just go over into chat and do that? You can just do all of this in the chat <laughs> side. I really haven't seen the advantage yet to the compose piece, but we're going to continue experimenting with it. Yeah. Trying to see what it we can work out. Those. Yeah, where it really comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, it could be one of those features that uh, disappears. Um, or maybe we'll yeah, learn more about it and it becomes super useful. But one of the things that I noticed too with the tone is that you it gives you a couple tone suggestions, but sometimes you prompt it and because of the tone, it won't generate a response. So if you have a tone that says professional and you prompt it, a, a specific question, it may not generate a response for you because it will say something along the lines of um, th what's generated from this tone uh, may be um, actually, let me get the exact word. Dangerous or maybe something like dangerous. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've gotten that like a lot. You're right. I've triggered like the safety on the compose feature a lot. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, it's like, you know, I'm like, Hey, write, write back, uh, write a standard operating procedure here. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, because maybe you're fooling people into thinking and making them think you're the manager when you're not. And it's like, just, just, just write the thing. It, it gets really spooked. <laughs> so you go over into the, the chat side, it seems a little bit more liberal and free over there to do what you were asking it to do, but you do have to know how to prompt these things. Again, if it tells you, I can't do that say, well, give me an example of that or pretend you're the thing. And then you have to kind of trick it into sometimes doing the thing you want it to do for some reason. It's because I, it's some sort of liability. They don't want to say like, oh, well, here's your SOP. Like I can give you, I can give you an example you shouldn't use. Fine. 30 seconds or less, Travis, let's make IT simple. Tell us about Bing Chat Enterprise Insights and Compose features. Yeah, really neat. If you want to actually uh, have suggestions fed to you as you're searching the web, 
you can find additional information about the subjects you're looking into. Very useful. And the compose feature, again, not quite fully baked yet, in my opinion, or as useful as the chat, but uh, it might be uh, something that you could find useful in your business, specifically if you're trying to do like email replies, uh, things of that nature. So give it a shot. If you haven't tried it out yet, play around with them. Let's see how this stuff evolves over time.